I am going to the gym. You know, it's, it's, it is early morning, um, Saturday. Hopefully nobody's in here. Because if people in here, I hate it. Okay. Nobody's in here. Um, I'm just getting a little extra workout in here, you know, for my legs. Um, I'm probably going to get on this right here. <laughs> um, I'm trying to do things differently in the morning. One thing I do in the morning, well, let me talk to y'all while I stretch. Let me set this up. One thing that I, I notice that I constantly do in the morning time, uh, let me set y'all right here, is... I sit. I just sit there, bro. Me on my phone, and I can't do that, bro. I need to start get more um, doing different, doing things different, you know. So now I'm pushing myself, like on the weekends, just to get up, you know, go work out. From either from my today is leg day. I, if y'all don't know, I used to work out a lot in high school. I was even bigger than this, but I don't know. Life do life, and then sometimes you just get away from things you used to do. And I want to get back into that. Um, so today, I, um, I'm trying to push myself to be more consistent. I'm doing leg day. And the next day, I'm doing upper up body. Um, and then, like, even if you're not a person that likes to work out, expect, like, if you're even older, if you're an older person, like, I feel like the best thing you can do for yourself and your body is cardio. You don't have to lift weights. I lift weights, and I do cardio. But cardio is very good for you, literally. I also, now, I like to take walks in the morning time. So if you're a person that's just stressed out, you know, start your day with just a morning walk. Walk around your neighborhood and just walk. Listen to music and just literally walk. It's very relaxed, trust me. So yeah, man, that's some stuff that I want to start doing differently as a person. Um, you know, just getting away from bad habits and stuff like that. But. And just make sure you stretch in the morning too. You know, even, even if you ain't walking or working out, stretch, stretch, stretch. Cause you'll feel better. All right. Stretching is good. So. Let me start this right here. You know, this is a warm up a little bit. And then eventually, I like to put this all the way high um, because it's like I'm walking up a hill and I'm trying to build muscle in my leg. And I just raise this all the way up. Fifteen. Then yeah. I'm about to listen to music while I do this, and I'm gonna take the camera back up when I get done. I see y'all. Hopefully, this motivates y'all to get up and get out there. Y'all gotta work out. Y'all gotta lift weights. Just do cardio. This is cardio. Just getting your body, you know, helping you, you know, as you get older. You wanna take care of your body a lot more. You know, probably even even eat a little bit better. You know, have a, a great routine. A food routine and stuff like that. A lot of protein. I would have to go with a lot of protein and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm going to hit y'all. Just walking around right now. Taking a little walk. I'm not done with my leg workouts. Because I got weights at home. And I do squats with those. So I don't like to work out in the gym. It gives me, it gives me anxiety. So I don't really work out in the gym. If I do go to like the big gyms, it's because I'm going to play basketball. Other than that, I don't really like working out in the gym. I have stuff at home. Um, yeah, man, so, I don't know. I'm just walking right now. Trying to just get relaxed. So, I'm going to try to make this little video uh, interesting as much as I can. So, um, so I'm going to post a video, right, of this kid, right? His name is Cortez. Got his last name, but his name is Cortez. Recently, 
in his this this clip. I can't really show much of it. Um, but recently in this clip, he got kicked out of his main school. His main school kicked him out, put him into that school. That school that he got kicked out. The school that he had that he was sent to was more of a I believe it was designed as like a, a rehab or a type of school for kids who have behavior issues to get them restored so they can be able to go back to their main schools. I'll be at home thinking about I want to fight tomorrow. So I, I'll play and I'm going to start a fight off. Get in the front of me! I'll walk up to the person who I want to fight and push him and see it. Then I'll see what he'll do. Get out my face, boy! I'm not playing with you, dummy. Don't come in my face. Sit down! I will take the whole bus right to the police seat. You don't care, but I will care. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now get Chow, down man. in the seat. Chow. Get down Chow. in the seat, Chow. man. Get down in the seat, man. What you say? Make me. What you say? Make me. All right, watch out, though. Hey, hey, you watch out, though. Make you Look at him. Hey, go, though, for real. Damn. Get your whole bitch ass on, man. Come sit down now, y'all. Keep my shit. I saw who threw it out the window. Tell them the reason why you can't look at him in the dry. Tell me why you can't look at him in the Yeah, I'm looking about that, man. Why you can't Because I'm high. High. You what? You high? Yeah. Smoking a lot. Smoking a lot of what? Weed. So, I want to ask y'all questions. First, after seeing Cortez, what is your natural judgment of him? What do you, what 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 this naturally can come to? Like what naturally came to your thought process? Like what did you think of him? Without knowing his his life story or anything like that, just off of what you just saw, what did you think of him? Like like write those down of what you thought, of Cortez. Um, Cause I know and this is true, and I'm gonna be honest. A lot of times, when Cortez step in top of when, Kids like Cortez step in a type of environment like that. A lot of people, oh, I don't want him in my class. Yeah, what did you think about Cortez? What was the first thoughts that the, the thoughts that came to your mind about Cortez? <laughs> Most people would think negative about Cortez. Negative thoughts, mostly negative negative thoughts would come to a person's mind about Cortez. Um, <laughs> It's just different things like that. It's a negative form of thinking that's around Cortez or kids like Cortez who go into environments like that. It's a negative thing. Uh, dude, when you think, when you first see Cortez or see his how his behavior is, you automatically think like, oh, I want to help him. Or, oh, he a bad kid. I don't want him in my class. He's going to get kicked out. He's going to get expelled. You know, just certain negative stuff about him, right? So write those down. And when you write your thoughts down, it allows you, it allow you to get to know yourself. It's allow you to, and it, it helps you, and it allows you to see how you think about kids like Cortez, you know. Uh, and when you write your thoughts down, it can help you. It can help you become better as a person who works in a school system, you know. Uh, it can help you become better as a person. It can help. It can help you become better as a teacher, and it can help you become better as someone who. How can I put this? When you try to, when you write your thoughts down and you want to learn about yourself and want to become better to the point where when you see kids like Cortez, you want to get away from those negative, th those negative thoughts and have it, like empathy and stuff like that. It will help you, it will help the school go in a better way and it will help you have a connection towards kids like Cortez to the point where you, you will gain influence, you will gain understanding and you will help the schools thrive in a better way, you know? So, um... After y'all um, saw Cortez's behavior, here's a clip of the root cause behind his behavior. My little sister, she got beat to death. My brother was killed on 16th Street in an all-black minivan. He got shot by his friend, set him up over some money. And my dad locked up for a murder that he did try to rob a store. And then his girlfriend tricked on him. I told him where he was at. How long is he gonna be away for? His life. As you can see, as you can see, as you learn about the root cause behind his behavior, it is trauma. You know, um, his, his dad, his brother, and his sister. And on top of that, he lived in Chicago. Um, he lived in the hood in Chicago. 
um, you know, his, his his inside of his environment is dysfunctional. So all that lets you know um, the issue behind Cortez. Now here is a documentary of Will Young. What's your name? Tiffany Hannah. And what's your baby's name? Precious Sterling. You live across the street from Robert. Mm -hmm. Did you know him? Mm -hmm. What did it look like? If I was to see him on the street, what, who, what would I see? Dark skin, short, brazen as hell. Brazen? Braids. Braids? How long did you know him? Since I've been staying around here. How long was that? About a year. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What was he like? Bad. You mean bad? Like when you say bad, what do you mean? Fighting still, breaking the people out. I think you should have asked this question. Yeah? Shut up! Well, Somebody open up that door. Did you ever see like the police coming to his house? Every other day. Every other day the police were coming to his house? Mm hmm Yeah? When you like, when you found out that he was, he was uh, killed, right? What did you think? I mean, it shocked me. He shouldn't have got killed like that. I mean, he didn't have to die the way he was killed, but that's the life you live. That's what happens. Now, when you see Lil Yummy, y'all saw the clip of him. Write down the thoughts that you had about Lil Yummy. What, what, what automatically came to your mind when you saw that clip of Lil Yummy? 11 years old, gang banging, stealing cars, uh, killed a girl, got killed, in and out of jail. At such a young age. What did you think about that? What, 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 are the, what are those negative thoughts that came to your head? <laughs> Write them down. Learn yourself. If you want to grow, you can grow, you know? Um, so, now, here is the root cause of Lil Yummy's behavior. First, I didn't believe it. And then when it was on the news, I believed it. And what, do you, what, what did happen to you? What do you know about what happened to you? Yummy uh, lived in a nice house and stuff like that. He was a every year old boy. He got beat by his father. He had burn marks all over him, stuff like that. I think the child was lost. The child was from a, a home without the proper upbringing that he needed. He had, like I said, from 22 months old. How many babies, you know, 22 months old and got two brothers or a brother and sister or whatever, but he has two other siblings, three and five years old, and you get to take a 22-month baby to the hospital with cigarette burns on his butt? Please, that's that's brutality on that child. And then you, the baby's left in the care of a three and a five year old. Where's the responsibility for that? But then, how can you blame the mother? Maybe she had her own problems too. And as long as the cycle keeps going like that, it's not broken by responsibility within the community itself. Now, as y'all can see, the root cause of your little yummy's behavior. Y'all see how he had no connection to his parents. He got abused as a baby. He got taken away, put in his grandma's care. The kid, he felt no love. He felt unwanted. He, mostly, he felt unloved, you know? So, with that understanding, and that knowledge that y'all have right now, just learning just the difference of what's going on in these kids' lives, the root cause of what was happening with them, the trauma that they're experiencing that's causing behaviors. What can you do now? I know, ask yourself, am I in the presence of a kid who has similar, a similar story or similar, similar behaviors as these kids that I just showed, that just showed you? Now ask yourself, how can I look at this situation different, differently to help this kid? You know? Um, <clears throat> and it takes a skill, you know, it does. It takes a skill. That takes understanding. I truly believe that every public school system that houses kids who come from poverty or has behavior issues, every staff and teachers, I believe they should take a test, a skill or, or something. Um, what's it called? They should take some type of class. And in this class, they should be taught about trauma. And they should be taught about the lifestyle and the environment that these kids come from. Uh, I, because I feel like a lot of staff and teachers who are put in these seats don't understand these kids, don't understand where they come, they come from, they don't, and they don't understand what trauma can do to a child. You know, so I feel like a lot of times in these type of environments, where these, where it's house, where where you have kids who come from poverty, who have behavior issues, I feel like 
it should be harder to get into those seats as a staff or a teacher. And I feel like when they do get into those seats, it should they should be they should it should be a requirement for them to take a class to understand where these kids come from. And I'm talking about a real class, like a documentary, go into these these environments, show what it's like living in the households that they live in or the neighborhoods that they live in. Um, and under, and show them how to show them the understanding of how trauma can affect the brain and how it can cause behaviors. If you know what I'm saying. But I wrote some stuff down, you know. Um, I was just speaking on schools need to push in these kind of uh, learning, these kind of schools to study to understand the environments and the. You know, I was just the same the same thing I'm just sharing with y'all. They also need to understand the power and damage of trauma and how it impacts the kids. And I said, this is something that I said, and everything that I'm saying is a peaceful, you know, I'm just, what I'm act, what I'm putting out is more of an argument. Uh, not a, a, a real argument, but stuff that can push people to think, if you get what I'm saying. So I said, how can you have teachers and staff who don't have an understanding? How do you think that school thrives? You have a bunch of teachers and staff in these schools that house kids from poverty um, around America. Uh, how do you think that kid? Would, how do you think that school would thrive if there's no connection with that with the kids and the teachers? And I say not not every staff or teacher is like that because you have staffs or teachers. I'm gonna just say staff in general. You have these individuals who do understand, who try to understand. You have people in school systems who don't know what these kids are going through, never been in their situation, but they try to understand. And that is more than enough because I had teachers, well, I had a teacher who never understood where I came from, but she pushed to try to understand. So she, and off of that, she became somebody in my life who helped influence my life to go a positive way, if you get what I'm saying. She made a huge impact, a positive impact in my life. You know, because often she just she never she 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 put she chose to understand where I was coming from. She didn't judge me off my behaviors, and she didn't judge me off of where I came from. When she saw me going down the wrong path, she pushed me. She showed me that she was disappointed, and she pushed me to see that it was greatness within myself. Just pushing to even though you wait from there, just trying to understand, or even connecting your story to their story. You know, finding some type of, some some type of similarities will go a long way because it can help. You can it can help. You have influence in that kid's life and push that kid to a positive direction. If you get what I'm saying. And I said, instead of focusing on filling seats, focus on who is filling seats. It's filling that seat because when you focus on the who, the quality of your school or the schools in America that houses these kids will rise compared to schools who just want to fill a seat. When you want to just fill a seat and you don't care who is in that seat, the quality of a school will not rise. You will see it will go downhill. You will see it. You won't. You won't see no positive impact in that school because you don't. You didn't care who filled that seat, and you just wanted to fill that seat. If you get what I'm saying. Uh, I spoke about suspensions, and I said, "How will suspensions help change a child's behavior if they are if they are reacting to a form of trauma?" I think a lot of times when kids have behaviors. This is my opinion. A lot of times people in school systems suspend kids because they feel like if I keep suspending this kid, they would change their behavior. But if, you, if you're if constantly suspending this, if you catch yourself suspending the same kid over the same behaviors, then something has to change. And I understand suspension is, suspension is needed sometimes because suspension teaches you about consequences. Suspension teaches you it is consequences to the bad choices that you choose to make. <coughs> So I do agree with suspension in that form, but it comes a time where you have to understand if you're suspending the same child over and over again for the same behavior and you see nothing is changing, then you have to go to another form. Okay, if, if this is not working, then something is deeper. What, can, what else can I do to help change this child's behavior instead of suspending them? You know, because I got suspended, you know, and I can tell you, I didn't really care about getting suspended because I still felt the same way. I still felt unwanted. I, I was angry. Uh, I didn't care, you know. Uh, and school, to me, was like an outlet to get all my anger out. You know, I didn't care. You can spend me all you want. I'm going to come back and do the same thing because I'm still feeling the same way within myself, if you get what I'm saying. So, uh, try to... 
keep a, a tally or um uh what's it called like a sheet of the kids if you notice the same kid is getting suspended for the same type of the same kind of behaviors keep that in like a record you know keep all these same kids together and like kind of keep that information under a kid's file if you hear what i'm saying and when you see a constant uh constant repeated cycle then you have to understand this is deeper than just a this, this is deeper than just suspension maybe once again going back to trauma or y'all saw those videos of those kids try to find another way to truly help this kid overcome whatever they're experiencing so to the point where those suspensions could start dropping because when you can constantly suspend, it's not getting better and it's not helping the school and it's definitely not helping that child in that sense, in that state, you know, if you get to that point. Suspension can help sometimes because you can have kids who do something and you suspend them to teach them that it is consequences to your behaviors and whether good or bad. And now that kid that you suspended off of that issue probably learned their lesson. You never seen that kid do it again. So suspension is needed because it teaches you about the real life. But when it comes to a point where suspension is not helping that kid change their behavior, then that's when you have to go to a point where, okay, sit back, sit back, go into a meeting or whatever, come up with resources, study, come up with ideas, come together and say, okay, this is not working. I think it's something deeper. Now, how can we truly help this child come get to a point where we can we can cut these suspensions down, or just how can we get to a point to truly help this child? Because I have I've, I have learned that these suspensions is not helping, so it's something deeper, you know. And that's where you come together as a, a school or whatever, and you truly sit down and you find other ways to really you know like to restore whatever is bothering this child. If you get what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah. Uh, it's a lot. I feel like if I created a school, Lord's will, I would probably have a very successful school. Because I thought about creating a school because I understand how to create a system. And if I ever created a school, I would create schools for kids who have behavior issues and who come from poverty. Because I feel like I know what it takes to really create. I know how to create. I know what it takes and I know what system is needed to get to push those kids in. You know, I feel like I know what it takes. So... I feel like Lawrence Will, I could create a very successful school. I feel like I know what it takes. Um, and just different things like that. Just just do off the understanding and just coming from poverty and being troubled myself and just understanding the knowledge that God has given me. I feel like I could create a very successful school because I understand this stuff. That I can create a great, a very, I feel like I can create a very successful system. <clears throat> and um, I just, it's the knowledge. I don't know. So it's just a lot of information that I wrote down, but this information I wrote down is not really connected to this video. So I wrote, I, I, I spoke on classroom activity stuff, have the boys go against the girls on the project. Uh, so for example, so as I stated how I know how to create systems and learning how to get kids involved and to the point where you get them involved, how can I put this? Uh, Get kids more excited to do their work. Get get them more excited to be involved to turn in more paperwork. Or not even work. Turn in more work in general. You know? Uh, so I, I'll come up. So something I said, I'll share. I'm going to share, you know. <clears throat> For example, classroom act activity. If you have a classroom or just kids who don't care to be involved in activities or not turning in their work or bored, uh, you can create activities where you get them excited to where they want to actually turn in, turn in their work. So I said... Classroom acti activity. This is something that other pe other people have probably tried before. Have the boys have the boys go against the girls on a project? Just off of boys versus girls is gonna bring an excitement off of that because boys and girls always going at it with each other. Oh, I better you know. And to create a healthy competition, it will cause them to really want to do this work, do this project because now it's all about bragging rights if you get what i'm saying so so if you put girls versus boys in your classroom most likely you will have a lot of kids participating you know and 
and they are going to want to get the A plus there because now they're competing with with each other. So whoever get the A plus, they're gonna rub it in each other's face like, oh, I got an A plus, oh, I got an A plus over you. We better than you, and, and it will it will it will cause healthy competition, and it will cause the kids to really participate in this activity, and it will it will cause you know if you give it on saying so, um, just off of. And you, and you could put a prize behind it, but just off of girl versus boys, whoever, who basically in their minds, whoever wins is better, you know, and they're going to push to get this A+. plus. You can add whoever get an A+, plus, get a pizza party or get this. So you can add that in there, but even if you don't add that in there, off the strength of girls versus boys, it will cause a lot of kids to participate because now they want to, it's, it's healthy competition, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, what I say? Yeah, I said you'll see many kids participating and excited. They will be excited to do this project. Also, I said something like just because a boy is hyper doesn't mean he has ADHD. He's just a boy with a lot of energy. And just all and, and off of that type of situation, even girls, uh, but mostly boys, because I noticed like when I working in the school system, I noticed it's really a lot of boys who just have so much energy. You know, and um when you have kids who just hold hyper, then you create activities that cater to their hyperness, if you get what I'm saying. Instead of creating activities that cause that kid who is hyper to sit in the seat and do work, which is going to create issues, create an activity of what you're trying to teach them <clears throat> in a way that allows that kid to move and jump around, you know? And uh, it's like, it's, 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 it's different ways, you know? It's different activities. It's, it's just it's a lot, you know? And, uh, I don't want to get off too off track because I did say I wanted to make this into like a little series, but yeah, man, it's a lot. I know it's a lot <coughs> to this stuff. Uh, that's why I do study a lot. Uh, it's simple things like that. But yeah, man, that's all I really had to say. Hopefully that gave y'all some type of insight. Hopefully it did. I don't know if I said too much. I don't know if I should say more. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, yeah, we out.